how much do we need in order to fulfill our cushion in terms of how much we want to have left over. We want to plan in to have a cushion in case we sell more than we thought. And so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take the next month's sales. So in this case, it was the 19.6, 19.6. We're going to take the August 20,100, 20,100, 20,100. We're going to have to estimate what it would be for October and then put in the units for uh, October and September. We're taking next month's totals in terms of unit sales, multiplying that times 80%. Why? Because this is the standard policy that we came up with in order to have a cushion as of the Indian inventory. This is what we want left over. We think we're going to sell so much and we want 80% uh, of next uh, month's sales left over. So if we were to multiply that out, the 19.6 times 80%, 15.680, 20,100 times 80%, 16,080, 20,006 times 80%, 16,480. That's what we want in Indian inventory at the end of July in this case. And then we're going to say the budget unit sales. We're going to say the budgeted unit sales. We're just pulling these down. There's the 20. There's the 19.6. There's the 20,100. Though that's what we're going to actually sell during the period. So we're going to take what we want in the Indian inventory plus what we think we're going to actually sell. That's how much we're going to need. That's going to be the units that we're going to need, the units available, the units that we would need to produce if we didn't already have some in there from last month but this is not our first year of operation so we have this is what we, we need to sell plus the Indian inventory cushion we're gonna have to subtract out from that what we have in there at the beginning so at the beginning we had uh, 16,694 we got the 15,680 that's gonna be of course the ending number here is the beginning number for the next month ending number here is the beginning number for the next month this is where we're starting out with because this is the ending number for the, the month prior to our budgeting process here. And so if we subtract this out, the 36,280 minus the 16,694 is the 19,586. The 36,680 min minus the 15,680 is the 20,000. The 36,580 minus the 16,80 is the 20,500. And that's the units that we need to then produce. So these are how many units we need to produce. Now, the next thing is, well, now we can think about the materials, the labor, the overhead. We're going to look at the materials next time. So if we need to produce, like, this is guitars, it would say if we're producing this many guitars, we got to say, well, how much wood do we need to get to buy in order to produce that many guitars? And you might be thinking, well, how much wood does it take for each guitar? We're going to have to just multiply how much wood it takes for each guitar, and that's how much it's going to take. But same idea is here, and the same idea being that we already have some wood, probably from last month, and we want to have some extra wood in case we have to actually make more than that number, just in case, for whatever reason, in case our budget is different. We want to make sure that we have enough in order to cover the sales that we need to cover. So, therefore, we're going to do a similar calculation here for the material. So, here's our production budget here. We're going to use the production budget to create the raw materials budget. How much material do we need to buy to make the stuff we're going to produce? So we got the production in units. We're just pulling uh, the production down, the production in units down. So here's the 19, here's the 20, here's the 20,005. The budgets are connected in this way. That's why we got to do it in this order. And then we're going to say materials required per unit. So if we're thinking about guitars, you could think, well, we're buying a plank of wood and we only need half the plank of wood per guitar. So we can make two guitars out of the one plank of wood. If we're talking about other types of things, it, it may mean that we need multiple units of material in order to create the guitar. So it depends what we're making. And so you got to be careful on how many units is it going to take to make it. In this case, it takes less than one unit in order to make uh, the, the product. Therefore, if we're going to make uh, 19,586 half times 0.5, it's going to take uh, 9,793 of planks of wood in this case that we're going to cut in half for each of uh, the units we're going to make. So same thing here, the 20,000 to 10, the, the 20,005 is uh, the 20,250. Then we're going to have the budgeted ending inventory. So this is how much we would have if uh, we didn't want any cushion at the end, but we do. We want to have some material left over. We want to have some wood left over at the end of the month. So we're going to say, uh, have this cushion in here. Now the calculation for this, and it's going to be dependent, the problem's going to have to give it to you. Uh, in real life, we'll have to put in some policy. The policy here is that we're going to take next month's uh, number, we're going to multiply it times 0.5. So that's the policy of this company. So 
Uh, that's going to be the 5,000. We're going to take in next month the uh, 10,250 times 0 0.5, 5 to, uh, 5125. And we would have to know October's number, which, which apparently is 8,000, in order to come up with this 4,000 here. So then if we then add these two up, we've got the materials needed for production. This is how much we want in Indian inventory. So the 9,793 plus the 5,000, 14,790. The 10, thousand plus the five one two five is the fifteen one twenty five and so on so this is the materials required if uh, we didn't have any in the beginning inventory that's how much we'd have to buy but we're saying we did have some in the beginning inventory and how much is in there at the beginning of the inventory well we started off with four thousand nine twenty five and then in the next month we've got five thousand of course the beginning uh, inventory is now the ending inventory for the next month and same here the beginning inventory for this month is going to be a projected ending inventory for this month all right and then uh, we're going to say the materials purchased then is going to be the this number plus this number gives us the nine thousand eight uh, sixty <laughs> eight sixty eight the fifteen one twenty five plus the five thousand is the ten thousand two twenty five the 14,250 plus the uh, 5 one is the 9,125. We're going to multiply that times the material price per unit. So how much does it cost per unit? In this case, we're talking about planks of wood. How much does it cost per plank of wood? This whole thing, we've been looking at units in terms of planks of wood. Now we got to turn that into dollars. And if we just multiply that out, then the 9,868 times the 21 is the 207,224 and so on and so on. And then if we add this up for the quarter, this is the sum in terms of dollars for the quarter. This is the sum in terms of units in terms of, of uh, planks of wood or units of material in this case.